morning and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Ashley and I run two Etsy-based embroidery shops where I talk about all about applique, embroidery, um, Etsy, and just running a small business from home. Um, so today is a vlog day. It is Friday here in my office. Um, I'm going to be working on the rest of my orders for this week. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit behind this week. I don't have a lot of orders, but I'm behind. Um, I had a little girl that was sick so focusing on her this week um, but today is my day to get all my orders finished and shipped so i have seven kids shirts left to do and like 12 to 15 jackets i don't know um somewhere in that range um jackets to do so i'm gonna get the rest of my files set up i don't even have those finished yet um and then i'm probably gonna run two machines on applique and one on just straight embroidery the jacket for the jackets um, and then i'm hoping i'm still gonna have time after that to do some new samples. Um, I'm really starting to get an itch. I think I'm gonna skip back to school this year. I kind of just haven't been on top of things. I think I'm gonna head straight into fall. Um, I'm really wanting to get some fall and Halloween samples done, so that's my other plan for today. Um, so first off, I'm gonna set up files. I'm gonna print off orders I've received in the past couple days, get those um, hole punched into my order binder. All right, so orders are all printed off now. It took me forever and a day to set up files, but they're all ready to go. So I'm gonna get the machines turned on, get just the daily maintenance done real quick, just clean them out, oil them, everything like that, make sure everything looks good. Um, and then I'm gonna transfer files over and actually start on the machines and show you guys some work. So I went ahead and transferred all my files over to my machines. I do not use a USB flash drive. I get asked that comment pretty frequently. I actually use a direct um, connection and then I have the cables run like a USB cable to my computer and then that way I can just copy and paste the files into pops up on your computer like a USB would. You can just copy and paste your pile, files in there and delete them as you need to and there's no need to chase down your USB stick and have it formatted correctly and have the right one. Um, that way you're just, everything's from your laptop anyways. Um, mine's always down here and it's always set within reach of my machine. So it works for me. I know that may not work for everyone, um, but I have my computer on anyways, so I just use it. Um, and my old machine, that's how I have to transfer designs. It does not take a USB stick. So you can only either use floppy disks, which no thanks, or use the direct connection cable. So that's what I choose. Um, and it's just easier to have them all set up the same. So that's my preference. I don't use USB sticks. I get asked that all the time. Um, you don't see me using them because I don't. Um, like I, said, I just use the direct connection and it's like a cable that you would use for your printer. Um, I can put a direct link if anyone's interested on um, the exact type that I use, um, but you can buy them anywhere. So the plan for today is I have like seven kids shirts or applique shirts to do and then only like 12 jackets. Um, so I'm going to get jackets started on my older six needle. Um, I have some the applique shirts though um, I am a little behind on. I have some that was supposed to ship yesterday. So those I'm going to start first. Um, I'm going to actually use two my both my 10 needles on applique shirts this morning. Um, until I get kind of more caught up with those since those take so much longer and then I might switch one of the machines back to um, embroidery with jackets. Um, normally I only run one machine on applique but um, just the distribution of what I have to work on still um, it'll go faster if I'm running two on applique. Um, so I'm going to get those started and um, hopefully get everything finished so I can work on the samples this afternoon. Before I can get the machines running, um, the next piece of prep work that I do for myself is I go ahead and get all my stabilizer ready for the day. Um, for my fast frames, I use six by six fast frames for my jackets. Um, I buy pre-cut stabilizer. Um, it's just as effective or just as cost effective if you buy it in bulk um, and it saves a lot of time. So six by six fast frames, I use a seven by seven piece of tearaway that I tape onto it. It's almost the exact perfect size um, and I'll tape that on with masking tape 
And then for the jackets, I use spray adhesive with a six by six piece of poly mesh. Um, if it's a dense design or on a stretchy fabric, I will sometimes double this up and use two pieces, but for most things, one is perfectly sufficient. Um, for my kids' shirts, I use the same combination. I use a piece of tearaway and a piece of poly mesh, um, but I use little different sizes for those. Um, for small kids' shirts, like around a 2T and lower, I will use uh, my fast frames, either a seven by seven fast frame um, for body suits and really small ones, shirts, or an eight by eight fast frame um, for those kind of in-between sizes. Um, again, the same rule of thumb applies. You need your, if you're gonna tape tear away to it, like I do, you need it about an inch bigger than your frame. So a seven by seven fast frame, I use eight by eight stabilizer, and then my eight by eights, hoops I use or I cut because I can't get pre-cut um, nine by nine inch pieces of tear away and then I do pre-buy um, sheets of eight by eight poly mesh for my kids shirts um, and I also now just started using 10 by 10 on my bigger kids shirts um, with the uh, mighty hoops um, I always used to use eight by eight because my designs were eight by eight, but you kind of get in the um, problem of you're stitching awful close to the edge or maybe off sometimes if it's not in there just exactly right. Um, so the 10 by 10s helped with that, um, not cutting it close that way. Um, and I buy almost all of those at All Stitch. Um, I do have those, most of those linked below or at least the link to All Stitch, um, the group um, of stabilizer, and then you'd have to pick what size you want. Um, the exception is the tearaway um, that I use with my Mighty Hoops or occasionally the bigger Durky Hoops. Um, I do buy rolls of that because I have not found a tearaway stabilizer that I like in the right size that works for me. Um, so that is one thing I do buy on a roll and cut myself. Um, it's a little bit more um, time consuming, um, but it is pretty cost effective. Um, so I try to um, cut up enough stabilizer, at least for the day, um, as I'm going. And I just pulled all the rest of this off the <laughs> roll, at the end of my roll. Um, but I buy this tearaway stabilizer at World Widener. Um, I can link that below, or you can find it on Amazon. Um, it's a little bit cheaper on their website, though. Um, and then I, this is a 12-inch roll and I cut it down to size. I cut like 11 or 12 inches. Um, that works perfect for the Mighty Hoops or the nine by nine Durky frames. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, I have another one of these on hand, thankfully. I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, enough of these for all my shirts today. Like I said, I already have pre-cuts for uh, my jackets, but I do need to go ahead and attach those um, all to my fast frames. I like doing as much of that as possible before I get going because once I have the machines going with three, I don't have time to stop and do that or my machines will stop and um, just be sitting idle and I don't like that. So I take the time before I start the machines to get as much of that going as and ready as possible um, so I can just keep rolling once I'm going. This is the tearaway stabilizer that I buy on the roll from World Widener. Um, like I usually buy a hundred yards at a time. It lasts me quite a while because I don't do a huge majority of kids shirts anymore. Um, and it comes, sometimes it comes in a hundred yard rolls and sometimes they send me two fifties. Um, but this time I have two fifties. I'm using the second one. Um, that's when I know it's time to reorder. When I open my last one, I try to go ahead and um, order another. That way I don't run into issues of running out.
my first shirt to hoot. So my tin needle that's on the stand is already set up for unicorn designs and I have two more to do this week. So I'm going to get those hooped first um, and I'm going to use my Mighty Hoops for um, both of those. They're both 5T shirts. Um, this is the 8x9 Mighty Hoop. I order mine either directly from Mighty Hoops or somewhere like Ken's Sewing Center because um, I can get free shipping through them. Um, so if you're looking for that, um, I also use ARB blanks a lot. I love Angela's AJ blanks, um, but I like the two styles that ARB blanks offers, and I've been using them so long that I've just um, not ever switched yet. So I'm going to go ahead and get these hooped up and show you exactly how I do that. I do, I know I keep saying this, I do really have a video planned. I just got to make the time to um, do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do applique shirts that is coming, um, but I will just a quick overview uh, while I hoop these up. Okay, so to hoop the um, toddler in larger sizes on the 8x9 Mighty Hoop, um, I flip my shirt inside out. I use a 10 by 10 piece of poly mesh and I do use light adhesive spray. I make sure I don't spray it near my machines and I have an actual trash can that I use just um, for overspray of this. I use the Gunnold KK1000. I buy it directly through Gunnold with a wholesale account and it's actually a lot cheaper than buying most of the other sprays including 505. This is a lot cheaper that way. So I just do a light spray. You can buy um, fusible uh, the poly mesh is just more expensive. I place that on my shirt. Next, I use my piece of tear away. Um, I, again, I cut mine about 12 by 12 or 11 by 12. Um, somewhere in there, I don't get too exact. I do buy that on the roll, um, so that's why it's never exact. Again, light spritz of adhesive spray. Place that over the poly mesh. Um, and then I'm going to flip my shirt back inside out. I do kind of hold on to the stabilizer, even though it has that adhesive. Um, it's not a very strong adhesive, which is what we want. Um, but I flip that back, straighten the shirt out, make sure the seams are nice and um, even on the sides. Then I fold my shirt in half um, and I line up the bottom and the armpit seams first. Um, and kind of start the crease and then up here at the top I line up the top of the sleeve and this neckline point here um, and finish off putting the crease in. Since I have that tearaway stabilizer in there it gives me a nice um, crease that I can easily see. Um, I do usually kind of smooth it out with my fingers just a little bit so it um, hoops nice and smooth. Next I take my mighty hoop and I slide it in just like this. You want the white side up the side with the writing goes down. Um, slide that in. I usually, since I have that crease on my shirt, I kind of peek in and I kind of try to line that up just on the center of this to help me. Um, there is a hooping board you can use with this. I don't have one, so I don't use it. Um, but if you're having problems getting these straight, you can do so. Um, and then with my Mighty Hoop, just let it engage. I double check with these um, holes in the hoop to make sure it's pretty well lined up um, left to right and you'll notice that it did not hoop very tightly. I have a lot of kind of bulk up here in the corner. Do, my advice is to not pull on your shirt out of here. You're going to, these are really strong magnetic hoops and you're going to pull and distort the fibers in your shirt. Please don't pull on those. If it's like that, unhoop and restart. It's okay. I mean, you know, it's, it happens. Just rehoop it. There you go. Nice. So much better. Um, there's not that extra up here in the corner that's loose. So now it's ready to go on my machine. So I did not show exactly how I set it up, but I have my stops all ready to go. That can vary a little bit in steps on each different, um, even brother or baby lock machine. Um, I have a little bit older model. I have the PR1000E. Um, I think they're up to a 1055X maybe now. Um, I think that's the most recent one right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and push sewing on my machine. 
I know that's like embroider on some machines and it's going to tell me if I need to change any thread colors. I need to change what's on needle three and needle two and it shows those for me. Um, everything else was already correct. Um, just my preference, something I do for myself, definitely not something you have to do. I anchor in um, these four here, four, five, six, and seven. They're the ones that are, let me point you up, in the center of um, the colors here, the threads, and they're the hardest to reach to change. Um, so I leave those anchored in on colors that I'm going to use all the time. Um, but if I need more than um, colors available, the other six colors for a design, I can always unanchor those and, and change those out. Um, but for now, I need to change needle three and needle two to those two colors. And I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, I have the, what I do is I cut the thread off and I tie the new one onto the old thread. And then down here, I just um, pull it, I pull it out of the eye of the needle. And then I can pull um, the thread all the way out and through until those needles, or those um, knots pass then you thread your needle. So I select the color I'm on, click thread, wrap it around, up and around, and then go to needle two and do the same. All right, and my machine's all ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it, um, it's gonna stitch out the outline or um, the placement stitch is the technical term for the number five um, to show me where I need to place my fabric. All right, so my placement stitch is done. It, you can see in a thread, it outlines where I need to place my fabric. That's the, the purpose of it. Um, so I am going to use this um, dot rainbow fabric. It's from Hobby Lobby, sometimes hard to find, but if you search long enough, you should be able to find it. Um, I apply heat and bond light um, to the back of all my fabrics. I always do a big piece of this because I use it so much. So just to save myself time, I prep it ahead of time. You can still see I still have the backing on some of it. You want to remove the backing for the piece that you're going to use. Um, you'll have that kind of shiny appearance and you're going to place it straight down on over top of the placement stitch and now it's going to do what's called a tack down stitch and this is to um, tack down your fabric and it's going to um, allow you to cut around once it's done. Okay, so now we have the placement stitch done. So I'm going to take it over to my cutting board and I'm going to use my applique scissors. I use small curved scissors and I cut around um, all that. And then we'll move on to the next piece, which in this design is the unicorn. So now that that's all trimmed, I'm going to put the um, hoop back on the machine and let it stitch out the placement stitch for the unicorn. So with the white stitching on the white shirt, it might be hard to see, but the placement stitch is done. So I'm going to lay down my fabric. And this is white glittery fabric and it is from Joann's. And I'm going to go ahead and start. And now it's going to run the placement stitch. Um, I'm sorry, the tack down stitch to tack down this fabric. And then I will cut this one as well. All right. So it's run. I've already started to trim it while it was running. You shouldn't do that. Don't do that at home. Um, I need to finish just trimming around the unicorn and then I will start the design. And since I have a multi-needle at this point, I can somewhat just walk away. It's going to finish, um, all the other stitches on the design. Um, I like to set mine up. So I do my appliques first and then I can walk away. I can be managing and working on the other machines and that's a huge time saver. That's why I often run one machine on applique. Um, once it's going, it pretty much is self-sufficient for the rest of the design other than maybe an occasional, you know, coming unthreaded or bobbin, but otherwise it's done, ready to go. And I can move on to other things and keep things going that are faster on my other two machines. Hey guys, so it's quite a bit later and I've actually been working a lot and kind of forgot to film. So I've got an entire stack of jackets done already. Um, I've got three shirts completely finished, two are almost ready to package. The other one I still need to trim and heat press, plus two more shirts going and another jacket going. So 
knocking him out pretty quickly. Um, still have a long ways to go though. Um, but it is 2.15. Um, I'm gonna package what's already finished so I can make sure those at least get to the post office today. And then the others I will take first thing in the morning. Um, rather take them today, but time running out of time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and package what I have and um, get those out the door for today. Um, didn't get through those very fast today, um, but those are quick and easy. I should be able to get them done either later this evening or first thing in the morning to ship out. Um, so I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks so much for joining us today. So glad that you guys are here. Um, let me know down below if you guys still like seeing these weekly vlogs. Um, I, of course, want to provide you guys with content that's actually helpful, motivating, and what you want to see. So um, I do have some tutorials planned, just haven't got around to doing those yet. So, um, working on that, making the time. Um, so I will see you guys next time.